Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Don't forget to please download the video and share it with your friends as soon as we finish. And today uh, we have a background, a bag noise. Hold. All right. Today our topic is the Muslims they deny that Allah is the moon god. So who was Allah? And how Allah end to be a father of three beautiful hot sexy daughters my skype is open from now if there is any muslim would like to give us the idea and don't tell me muslims that you muslims do not know how the arab end worshiping allah who has three daughters you see the what the, what the muslim they say to us or the muhammadan that the arab before islam they are pagan i agree they are pagans but Islam is a pagan cult because you and the pagan they are worshiping the same God. You see, the Quran consistently keeps saying that the Arab they worship Allah. The Arab, the, the, you see, the Quran never said that the Arab are not worshiping Allah. So how the pagan they have the same God of Muhammad? You know what I mean? If they are pagan. I mean, you call them pagan, yet they are worshipping the same God you worship. Now, this God, his name is Allah. Where this name coming from? They don't know. Why we don't see it in the Torah? They don't know. Why we don't see it in the Injil? They do not know. They will say to you, oh, if you read the Arabic translation of the Bible, this is a stupid translation, you know. This is not the Bible, this is a translation. The same as your translation when you say Jesus. There's nowhere in the Quran that says Jesus. Nowhere in the Quran there is a per person his name is Yeshua or Jesus. There is a guy his name is Isa. Who is Isa? We do not know. So Islam, you know, simply is a collection of paganism mixed together with other belief. Like Christianity, Judaism, because Muhammad trying Muhammad is like a corporation trying, uh, uh, you know, to to uh, okay, all of you just believe I am a prophet. I believe in what you believe. So even he promised the Sabian that they will go to heaven. How in the world the Sabian they will go to heaven? The Sabian they worship stars. The Sabian they worship stars. How the Sabi and they will go to heaven? Because Muhammad is a Sabi and Muhammad is the same as Obama. He is a Jew with the Jew. He is a Hindu with the Hindu. He is a Christian with the Christian. He is a Muslim with the Muslims, and he is an atheist with the atheist. Look what the Quran said. In the Ladina Amanu. والذين هادوا والنصارى والصابئين. Okay, who are they? What what will happen to them? Translation, please. Those who they are Jews, and those who they are Christians, and those who they are Sabians. They will go to heaven. I mean, you tell me how this happened. How the Sabian became in the same line with the Christians and the Jews. I mean, do you know that the Sabian guys they believe, and this is written in their book. That Adonai, the God of the Jews, is the devil. Do you know that? The book it's called Kenza Rabba. I can pull it out. Actually, I have it. The Jews, according to the Sabian, they are the enemy. They are the enemy because they worship the, the enemy of their God. And what is the reason the Sabian they believe the Jews is their enemy? Anyone knows? Guys, just refresh the page if you have difficulty. Anytime you have difficulty with the sound, just refresh your page, please. Always, when you lose your sound, refresh. Why the Sabi and they consider the Jews their enemy? Anyone knows? No one knows? 
Okay. Well, the Sabian believed that the Pharaoh, he was a Sabian. He is from the same religion. And the Egyptian, they are Sabian. And actually, this is, this is very uh, uh, close to be accurate because the Sabian belief spread all over, all the way to Yemen. All the way to Egypt. This was one of the most popular belief in the Middle East. Right? This was one of the most popular belief. Uh, somebody says this has happened. Uh, his name is Daniel Kamisi, saying if, if this is if they convert to Islam. That's very funny of you, my friend. It says the Jew is the Sabian and the Christians, which means you are a Jew and you are going to go to heaven. You are a Christian and you are going to go to heaven. And you are a Sabian and you will go to heaven. So those who they are Jews and those who they are Christians and those who they are Sabian and whoever believe in Allah and the last days, he will go to heaven. Try something else. It doesn't say those who convert to Islam. It says those who they are Jews. They are. The Sabian believe that the Pharaoh is one of them. So what happened to the Pharaoh was done by the enemy God of their God, Adonai. And this is the name written in their book, Adonai. So Adonai is the enemy of the Sabian. And even they make fun of Adonai, they say he is the devil who ordered his followers to do circumcision. Muhammad, he adopts circumcision. Sabian, they consider circumcision from the devil. So how those three, you put them together and you say they will go to heaven because Muhammad is a scam and he is willing to accept anyone, anyone, just say you believe in Muhammad, you will go to heaven. He was trying to promote himself as a prophet. He want to show them that I am not against you. You will go to heaven and you will go to heaven and you will go to heaven. Now the question for today, why Allah, he end with the three daughters? Right? Do we have any Muslim want to call me? My Skype, let me be sure that my Skype is open. Hold on. We'll give a chance to the Muslims to call us. We will be happy to hear your voice. If you are a kid with an insult, please don't call us. We will hang up on you. If you want to shout and scream and you will not let us talk, we will hang up on you too. If you use filthy word, you will get what you deserve. All right. All right. We are in Skype. Feel free to call us. We are live on Skype. May Allah torture me inside the grave. Okay. What about your, your Allah? He answered your prayer and do something for you now. Look at you. Look what happened to you. I mean, you are in the best situation ever and Allah is not there. Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan? He have an answer for what we are talking about. If we go to the Quran, we will find the following. Allah complained that the Arab, they gave him three daughters. All right. Allah is saying to the Arab, Did you see Allah and Uzza? I mean, how in the world you see Allah? Did, how you say to them, Did you see? No, they did not see them. 
Allah claimed that there's really, really, there's a three daughters for, for, for there's, they are called the goddess, they are Allah, Allah, because he says, did you see them? You see here in translation, he says, have you thought upon them? It doesn't say that, it says, afara'aytum. If we change the translation, just to show you how, how the translation, you know, Islamic propaganda, it's a joke. Here, how do you consider Allah al -Uzza? It doesn't say that. It says, Far Afar Aitum. Try to change the translation. Let us see uh, this uh, another Muslim, Muhammadan. Maldudi, Dudi. Let us see Mr. Dudi. Have you ever thought? I mean, where, where is the word thought? What, what's happening here? Thought, Ahmad Ali. Have you considered? <laughs> One after one. Aitani, <laughs> <laughs> have you considered? <laughs> Let us see if we will find one honest translation between all those translation. Have you considered? Uh, carry. Look like they are copy copying each other. You know the word afara aitum, ra'a. Mean he saw, and this is an Aramaic word. It's not an not, not an Arabic. So, did you see? Not to consider. Did you see the fact Muhammad he claimed that yes, he saw Manat. He saw Allah. He saw Al Uzza to the point even he sent Khalid bin Walid to kill. One of the daughters of Allah. Is the daughter of Allah a real or fake? Who's a Muslim want to tell me? Are they real goddess? They are exist or they are fake? Any Muhammadan can give us an answer. Is the daughters of Allah, are they real or fake? <clears throat> Any Muslim? What happened? After we hang up and we go, they will say to us, Christian Prince, you are a coward. And then they say they want to debate me. And if I ever speak to them, they will not let me talk. Who is the coward? All of them, they have no idea what they believe. They don't even know who is Allah. They do not know what the word Allah means. They do not know how this is happening. Where this is Uzza is coming from? Where this is Manat is coming from? Who are they? And how the Arab who believe in Allah, they have God. His name is Allah, the same as Muhammad. He is this exactly the same God. And Muhammad is born from the same city. He believe in the same God, yet they are pagan. Any Muslim? Anyone? They have no idea. They have no idea. Why they have no idea? Because they are Muslims. Muslims are people who say we are Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. What Allahu Akbar mean? Even Allah, how you say Allahu Akbar? I mean, Akbar in Arabic means bigger. What does that mean? And how you compare Allah if He is the only true God to anything? Because the second you say Akbar is the same as in Arabic, we say bigger. The Muslims they say it's mean a greater. Okay, well, hold on. Greater than who? We 
We have to compare between two from the same kind. Who, who we are comparing Allah to who? They don't know. They have no idea. I mean, how they will have an idea? They are Muslims. Our Skype is open. Friendly challenge is open for any Muslim to call us. We are not like your, you know, those who grow beard and they claim that they have knowledge, but yet they, they don't dare even to take a, 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 a call. Anyone? We will give them time. Maybe they can invite each other and they can call us. Now look what Allah he says. And this is showing us that the one who wrote the Quran is a very, 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 very weird person. Obviously, he's Muhammad. Are you to have the male and for him the female? This is the Muslim translation. Allah is saying to them, what? Hello? You got the male children and you give me females. And the funny, the Quran says that the Arab, when they used to hear that they have a female daughter, they complain. You are the one who's complaining. Do you see it? Allah complain about what? Like what? Hello? For you, the male, and for me, the female. I mean, what is that? Allah, he don't like to have females. Again, this is chapter 53, verse number 21. Right? <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? What kind of logic is logic? I mean, just say they are, I don't have. You for you the male for me the female so Allah don't like females and this is repeated all over the Quran you see the Arab the Muslim they say that the Arab they were savage people they kill even their daughters the fact it doesn't say that actually the Quran says if Allah don't want them to do that they will not do it it was Allah will but anyway this is a different interpretation maybe we can talk about it later look what the Quran says Confirming that the Arab they, they didn't have a problem with having gods and they are daughters, they are females. Read carefully, chapter 4, verse number 117. They invoke and they invoke none but females beside him. Do you see it? And here we notice that Allah is him and they are the females. Is that me saying that or this is the Quran? And Allah is putting down the Arab for they are worshipping females. Are you stupid or what? How you worship females, huh? So the argument of Allah against worshipping someone beside him it is the female. You see, he did not say they are false gods. He said they are females. So the word female is very important to mention their gender. You know what I mean? He did not mention the word female for no reason. It's just to say to them, shame on you. You are worshipping females. And this is telling you that the Arab before Islam, they were way better than the Arab after Islam. Because as you see, here we go, they are worshipping females. I'm not talking about better if they are worshipping the right God or not. I'm talking about better as they are not savage. They don't mind that a female, she is God's for, for them. So the idea of him, the God, 
is the idea of Allah as you see not only that the Arab they consider even angels are female not only gods are females but angels <clears throat> if we go until now by the way we would not see anyone texting us let us go for this verse first hold on Um, did your Lord prepare for you sons and himself adopt females? I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid logic like this before? And not only that, you accepted females to be among the angels? You accepted females to be among the angels. You see the problem? You see how big the problem? So Allah, consistent speech, speaking about females as they are not worthy of worship. They are females. Any Muhammadan have any comment? Anyone? Please refrain from using bad language, because if you use them, uh, YouTube we have we have uh, uh, we have YouTube uh, like a guideline active, so your comment will be hold, and is not going to show. The only one who will see it is you. Don't use bad words, and we will not approve it. Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan? He have something to say. May they, may they, may they. Allah have a problem with females. And we are waiting for any Muhammadan to explain to us how Allah he ended with the three daughters. Where this idea is coming from? Any Muslims knows? Guys, don't mention to me now, speaker corners. Just focus with me. I mean, who care about this kid and that kid? They talk about me in my back. But when we talk to them, when we call them, they don't dare to talk to us, correct? You witness that. I mean, they are a bunch of cowards. They are not even worth it to, to mention their names. When we call them, they start playing uh, tape. And the tape is edited. They are a bunch of kids. The real man is the one who call a Christian prince and debate him. Right? You ask me a question, the second I start answer, mute him, mute him, mute him. And then hang up him, hang up on him. What a debate is debate. What did not debate? We get them busted. They are afraid. It is fear, my friend. It's fear. He is speaking to Christian Prince himself. So I will not give him a chance to talk. He will destroy me. We cannot have a conversation. Yeah. So do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? Any Muhammadan would like to call us, please. And don't worry, be happy. We are going to speak to you nicely. Just don't use bad language. We would like to hear you. The only one I don't really like, you know, there is uh, sometime I receive calls from Nigeria. Muslim Nigerian, when they call me, they don't let me talk. 
I, I spoke already for like four or five of them. There's a unique thing about Muslims in Nigeria. The second they call you, they ask you the question, and then they answer it. I remember once I received a call. This is what I was in the Middle East. There's a guy is asking me about someone. So he called. He said, is uh, etc. here? I said, well, uh, he said, I think, you know what? I think he's now in the coffee shop, maybe. Hmm? I think so. I said, well, uh, he said, you know what? I think no, because today he is going to meet with our brother, whatever, you know, a friend. I said, uh, he didn't let me talk. I mean, 15 minutes, he is just telling me, I think he will be there. He would think we'll be there. And then I said to him, well, I am the one who is you are asking for. It's me. What an idiot. So if you like to call us, we will come everybody, but please give me a space to talk. We will let you talk. Let us talk. We cannot talk over each other. I will hang up on you because there's no point. We want to understand you. We want to hear you, but you should hear us too. This is what conversation is about. Otherwise, don't call me. Talk to yourself. Just to stand in the front of the mirror and talk to yourself. Like, yeah, the guy, Nigerian boy, he called me yesterday. He says, uh, you did lie. The Jesus did not say I am God. No, he says that in the front of your face. He said, uh, read uh, King James. Even in King James, it says that because he's, when he say I am, each time the Bible say I am, you see when the translation uh, uh, say that when Jesus says I am, he is quoting what God says to Moses. So when Jesus says, I am the life, how that can be a prophet? I am the life, you are a prophet. Who, you, how you can be the life? People, did Jesus say, I am the life or I'm lying? How you can be the life? You are just a man. You are a prophet. This is what the Muslim they say. So they say to you, what he said, I'm, he, each time he said, I am, he said, I'm God because I am the life, which means all life is coming from me. I am the resurrection. I am the truth, even the names of Allah, they are the names of Jesus, which means Allah, Muhammad, he copied the name of Jesus, he put it for Allah. The truth, the resurrection, the light, the nur. And yet they say to you, where Allah, he said, I, where, where Jesus said, I am God. And by the way, don't worship Jesus because he said, I'm God. Because I can say I'm God too. <laughs> Anyone can say I'm gone. <laughs> uh, by the way, is the timing good? Like three o'clock? Is the timing good for you guys? It's three time in my time. We are already live on air for 34 minutes, I think. So is it good timing? Let me know, please. So maybe we can fix like only one time. Uh, and from time to time, I will go like in different timings just for people who they are in Indonesia, you know, because we love those brothers there and sisters and we want to serve them too. So we can give them a chance to be live with us. All right. Now, my Skype is open. I see nothing, totally nothing. Not even a single text, not even a single call. Why? What is the problem? Don't you want to get my IP? I mean, come on. Listen, if you call me in Skype, you will find my IP. So you can flag me each time I go live on air. Don't you want to do that? The second I go live on air, they have like 200 people there. And they are using like, uh, you know, uh, uh, hitting into it, uh, you know what happened that's the software I have is stuck with that IP I don't know why and it's forwarding to the read IP so we have to change the software and the equipment and now they cannot do it can you call me if you are a Muslim you can call me my friend we want Muslims you see what they want to do the same as the Muslim they do two Muslims talking did you see what the Christian plans he said yes brother disgusting <laughs> we are here we are here and we are proving that Islam is nothing but a scam and nobody want to call us
And here, what is this is proving to us that the Arab, they are pagan like Muhammad because they are worshipping the same God. You see, they are worshipping Allah and beside Allah, they are worshipping with him other gods. So what is the proof that Allah is not just additional pagan God? As long as those are pagans, believe in Allah. Actually, we can prove easy that Allah is a pagan God. Allah name is not exist. There's Allah, not Allah. The word Al is a, like in Arabic today, the word Al means the. It's not really even a, like, we cannot even call it a word. Al, this type in English, so you guys can see it. Al. Lah. This is what the name of Allah is. Al Lah. In the ancient Aramaic and even Hebrew, Al is a word meaning God. Later by time, the word Al became ill. So any name would come after it will be God Elohim. You know what I mean? El is God. Is a word God. This is why the angels of the Muhammad, he stole them from the Jews, they end with El. So El either is before the word or at the end. Like Mikael, Gibrael, Azrael, Israfil. Those are names exist in the Islamic books. So, Muhammad the pagan, he stole names. He did not know even what they mean. If we ask the Muslims, what is, why, 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 what is the name Jibreel mean? They don't know. What is even, even the language? What is the language which is Jibreel is coming from? They don't know. You know what I mean? They don't know. Because Islam is a theft. It's a copy paste. They don't know. It's like a police car stop you in the street and you have a bicycle. You ask you when you buy this bicycle, you say, I don't know. How much you paid for it, I don't know. Yesterday I was, I was watching a YouTube like about police, you know, uh, uh, like uh, chasing, you know, weird people. A woman, she have a drugs in her bra. They ask her, okay, do you have any drugs with you? She said, no. She said, no. Then they got a police woman to check her out. And she found a lot of drugs in her bra. They asked her, where is the drugs coming from? She said, no, I mean, it's in your bra. The drug is in your bra and you do not know? This is Muhammad and this is Islam. Allah is in their bra, but they have no idea where Allah is coming from. Then Muhammad can explain to us how the bra of Muhammad had Allah inside and he did not know what is that? Right? Then Muhammad then? Anyone? Skype is a mute. Nobody talk, nobody is calling. All right? Uh somebody is saying a truth seeker he's saying, let me show you what he's saying. How come Islam is a theft and yet correct the errors in the Bible? Okay, give me give me an error the Quran correct in the Bible. Here we go. Mr. Truth is saying how Quran is a theft, Islam is a theft, 
but yet it's correct the, 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 I mean look how stupid what you just said Quran correct the errors in the Bible like what that Mary she is the sister of Aaron and Mary is the daughter of a man his name is Omron and Omron is the father of Moses and Aaron so according to your stupid prophet sorry to say so but I have to say the word stupid he thought that Omran, the father of Mary, is the same Omran of the father of Moses. But Mary, she don't have a father. His name is Omran. So you are telling me that your Quran correcting the Bible? I mean, what kind of God? He do not know the correct name of the father of Mary. Muhammad, he, 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 because he's a fool, he heard the Jews saying that Moses have a sister. Her name is Maryam. So Muhammad, he went home. Maryam, aha, Maryam, the sister of Aaron, aha. So he made a verse in the Quran says, Ya Ukhta Harun. Ukhta Harun? Mary, she became the sister of, of Aaron? Yes, because Maryam, she's Maryam. Isn't her name Maryam in Arabic? The Muslim, when, when, uh, when Kabul Ahbar, he came to Aisha, and he said to her, your husband, the prophet, he made a mistake because there is hundreds of hundreds of, of, of years between Mary and Aaron. Maryam, the mother of Jesus, is not the same Maryam, the, the, the sister of Aaron. Muhammad, he heard that. He, oh, the Jews get me busted. I have to fix it. He said, no, in the old days, they used to call them by their great ancestors. But first of all, my friend, Aaron is not from the ancestor of Mary. They are from different tribe. Secondly, how you explain to me the mistake that Muhammad, he put Mary in the Quran. She is the daughter of Amran. If we ask Mr. Truth, what is the name of the father of, Amr, of, of Moses in the Quran? Mr. Truth, seeker, I'm waiting for your answer. What is the name of the father of Moses according to Islam? Who want to help me? Who is a Muslim? <clears throat> Anyone? How, how Mary in the Quran, look, if we go in the Quran, there's a chapter in the Quran a chapter, the name of the chapter, Al Amran. The Bible said, God created heaven and earth in the sixth day and rest in the seventh day. Quran in the 50 ayah. Let me show you what this guy he said. You know, always I encourage Muslims, by the way, to make this comment or even to call us so we can, you know, we can have fun. The Bible said God created the heaven and the earth in six days and rest the Quran this, the, the, uh, in the seventh day. The Quran says in the, in, in the chapter 50 says Allah created the heaven and the earth in six days and no fatigue. This is because if you are stupid, you see the word is rest. It means no more work to, to be done. It's not God is getting tired. However, let me get you busted. Allah, after he finished creating the earth, he sat in his throne. Is that because he's tired? Why somebody he go and sit in his throne? You see, you are the one who mentioned this, so we have to go for it. You, br you brought this to yourself. This is your Quran, chapter 77, verse number 54. Look what your Quran is saying, and this is your Muslim translation. What happened to Allah after he created the earth and the heaven in six days? He sat in his throne. Why? He is tired? So you are saying the Quran correcting the Bible, it says that God, he rest. So Allah, he sat in the chair because he is not tired. <laughs> Do you see it? Secondly, why Allah is moving from his throne you muslim you say that allah he said in the quran if allah he want to make something happen he said b is going to be but as you see allah he go down and he work 
What Allah He created by saying be. It took him six days. Where is the word be? Somebody he can create something by be as you claim, yet he is taking him six days. You might say, okay, well, you know, the earth, the creation, it was not by B. No problem. Okay, name for me one thing Allah created by saying B. As an example, God in the Bible says, let be light and light was. Okay, show me in the Quran where Allah, he said, let be this and that was. We cannot find it. <clears throat> right? The book of uh, Exodus, God refreshed. You see, you know, you can't. This is your, this is your understanding. You see, everything is written there in the Bible. It's about God. You see, uh, uh, when a Muslim he tried to explain something, we laugh. We laugh because you are bringing your own interpretation. And look, you change the topic in a second because you got busted. Before we go to what you are talking about, the book of Exodus, so we will laugh at you more. Can you explain to me why the Quran says Allah created the earth in six days? In one chapter, in the other chapter says eight days? Is it six or eight? This is chapter seven. If we go to chapter, let us see. What a stupid book. And look, you know, they are trying to avoid to talk about Allah and the three daughters. They were not, they didn't know, they didn't know. Nobody can answer us. So if we go and see what the Quran is saying about the creation of the earth and the heaven. Huh? Hold on. But no problem, we will go with them. Allah, he created the earth in two days. Read it. Chapter 41, verse number 9. How many days? Two days for the earth. Okay. Then, after that, He set in it, or on it, firm mountains, according to the funny God of Islam, Allah, he placed mountains in the top of the earth. <laughs> and the reason for that, so she will not move. In how many days? And he ordained it in four days. What is the number now? Six days. And then he turned into heaven and he finished them in two days. The total is eight. All right? Uh, true seeker. You see, when you, when you say the Bible says Solomon, he did that. Give us the verse so we can laugh at you. And let me get you busted. Guys, I want a true seeker, if he is a brave man, to say that if Suleiman, he worship idols, any religion teach that, who have idols, he is satanic. Say that. It's a challenge for you. Are you willing to say that? Or you will not. Anyone, any book teach that the Prophet Suleiman he have idols. That is satanic. Say it. Let us see who is the pagan. Here we go. This is your prophet Suleiman. He is ordering the genie to build for him statues. You see here the translation says figures. What figures? It says Tamathil. Let me change the translation and everybody will laugh at you in a second. So this is your religion teaching that. Who's next? Who's next? This is the best you have? And now he will change the topic. He will keep moving like a monkey. You know, this is what uh, Mimi Hijab, he asked me about uh, breastfeeding. Okay, why the prophet he uh, allow breastfeeding? He don't want to talk about it. Uh, different topic. Play this video now. Mute him. Uh, kids. A bunch of kids. Keep jumping like a monkey. You don't even dare to stay with one topic.
Is that your prophet Suleiman? He is building synagogue full of statues or I am lying? Chapter 34, verse number 13. Are you there? Potato? Wrong? It's in the front of you. No, it was Suleiman he ordered you idiot because Allah he gave him command over them. If he will look, 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 let me show you how stupid this guy is. Look what he just said. It's it wasn't Suleiman because he didn't he don't know how to read. It wasn't Suleiman he ordered them. Let me let me take a snapshot and put it there. Does it say guys they made for him what he willed? I mean how foolish you are. Does it say there? They made for him what he willed. And this is your Muslim translation. Brother and sister, it is not he, he the one who ordered him. It is them who did that. It says what he willed. And not only that, he have a, he, you know, he have control of them. He have the ring of Allah, Hoributa ring. I mean, I stay here fasting, waiting for a Muslim for a snack. And then at the end of the day, I get Abbas. He don't even have bones. He is not even a jellyfish. There's no honor even to, to crush him. Doesn't say what he will. They do to him what he will. You're just a kid. And now as long as you open this topic, you tell me why Prophet Solomon in the Quran, he is a Muslim, yet he is making his statues. My friend, don't tell me about this guy and this guy, he making funny response. Eh, let them make response. The, actually, the, it's very good that they make response. People will watch it and people will laugh and then they will come here to see me and listen to me more. I, I am very thankful for the Muslims who do advertising for what we do. So more Muslims will leave Islam. Because as you see, as long as they cannot refute me and call me, if those people who claim to be have knowledge, call me. Silence me. Mute me. <laughs> Hang up on me. Mute him, mute him, mute him. I speak for once again. Mute him, mute him. Cowards. If they have the guts, they will call me. We'll go, I'm here. Any Muslim can tell us why Allah telling Suleiman to build synagogue, synagogues full of statues. Huh? I want to know. Any Mohammedan? Any Mohammedan here? So look, we are we are moving like you know they they, they will not answer us. Let me show you that Muhammad he believed that the daughters of Allah are real. If we ask Muhammadan, is the daughters of Allah, are they real or fake? They will say they are fake. Well, because you have a fake knowledge. You don't have knowledge. Because you, Muhammadan, are Muhammadan. And as long as you are a Muhammadan, how you will know? I never heard of a Muhammadan he know. Have you? This is the book of Ibn Kathir. The book of who? Ibn Kathir. Is Ibn Kathir is a Jew? No. Is he Hindu? No. Is he Moody, the Prime Minister of India? No. This is the book of Ibn Kathir. Tafsir al-Quran. The chapter is az -Zariyat. Actually, chapter 53, yeah. Al-An'am. Al-Najm, sorry. Page number 51. Allah Prophet, he sent Khalid ibn al-Walid to kill al-Uzza. Okay, maybe it's meant to destroy the idol of al-Uzza. No, 
to kill a woman she is al uzza read it muhammad he sent him i don't know if you can read the text i'm not sure if it's clear from your side guys is it clear It's a clear evidence that Muhammad, he believed that Allah have three daughters and he want to kill them. And this is a story in front of you. The prophet of Allah, he sent one of his, supposedly he's like a cousin, you know, he's like from, from the tribe, from the family, right, right after Muhammad. His name is Khalid al Walid. So he sent him and he told him, I want you to kill. I want to send you a mission. So, this man, he took his uh, uh, men with him to find uh, this uh, daughter of Allah. And then he said, because they were, uh, were more famous than the others, and Nisa'i recorded that Abu, etc., etc., when it was, uh, let, me, let me highlight, hold on, so we can see together, so you understand what I'm reading. All right. And let me see if I can increase the size of the text. <clears throat> Give me a second. I'm not sure if now you can see it better or not. But we are trying. I made the text bigger. So I hope it will be better from your side. So look what it says. When the Messenger of Allah, he conquered Mecca, he sent Khalid ibn Walid to, a, to the area of an nakhla where the idol of Al-Uzza was erected on three trees of the forest. Khalid, he cut the three trees and he approached those house, the house which was built around it, and destroyed it. Then he went back to the Prophet and he informed him what he did. Look what Muhammad, he said to him. He said, go back. You did not finish your mission. He said, go back. And finish your mission. You have, for you have not finished it. Okay, so what is the mission? Khalid went back. And when he, uh, uh, he arrived there, uh, to that area, there were the servant of Al-Uzza. Those are the one who served the goddess. They saw him. And they started invoking by calling Al Uzza, O oh, Al Uzza, O oh, Al Uzza. When Khalid approached it, he found a naked woman whose hair was like crazy and was throwing sand on her head. Khalid killed her with the sword and he went back to the Messenger of Allah who said to him, What he said to him? Read carefully, Muhammadan. That was Al Uzza. <laughs> That's what? That was Al Uzza. So your prophet believe that Al Uzza is a real person and she is alive since centuries or maybe thousands of years. Because his grandfather, the grand grandfather, the grand grandfather, all the tribe they worship those uh, goddess, and now finally Muhammad he killed Al Uzza. Any Muhammadan have anything to say? Do you see it? He did not say. This is a crazy woman you are where you killed her he said this is al uzza that was al uzza so islam believe that al uzza is a true daughter of allah and muhammad he killed them here the story report killing one of the daughter of allah Any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan have anything to say? If we are Zakir Naik, he will say to you, Ibn al when the Prophet he conquered Mecca, 
He sent his president in the, the country with the NGV. What? In the NGV. Uh, okay. Uh, who, I mean, who cares? Whatever you say. And he told him, go and find an order. And he went there, he found the three trees. And he cut the trees. And he destroyed the house. And he came back to the Prophet. And the Prophet, because he's so smart and he is so very artificial, he said to him, you did not finish your job. Go back. And the brother, Khadr Walid, he went back. And he found the woman, she is naked. And by the way, she was 60. And you know it. What? Do you really Muslim believe in this story? So listen to this. Your prophet, he killed the daughter of Allah, and the daughter of Allah is a real person, and she is a woman, and she was naked. Too bad I wasn't there to wash. To wash. Hmm? So now what we find that Islam not only teach that the Arab worship Allah and Al-Uzza and Manat. Islam believe they are tr tr truly exist and they are alive for thousands of years and here we go Muhammad the prophet of Allah he killed one of them any Muhammadan And what they will say to you now, uh, 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 who is the Senate? Who is the Senate? Uh, who is the Senate? Give me the Senate, give me the Senate. <laughs> and by the way, according to the Senate, this is Sahih. Give me the Senate. As if he's saying, give me the stupid name, the, the name of the stupid who said that. Any Muhammadan want to say anything? Our Skype is open, not even a single call. Look like they don't even want to get my IP. I mean, come on. Don't you want to get my IP so you can flag my, uh, supposedly, so you will stop my broadcast? Call me and get my IP. I have an IP for, all, for you. Just call me, we'll give you the IP. Any Muhammadan? Yeah, I know truth. Yeah, actually, truth is posting for you in Arabic. The reference it says a Sahih Sanad. You are right. It is Sahih Sanad. It's authentic. So, what is that will lead us to? That Allah have really three daughters. And Muhammad was sent by Allah to kill them. This is remind me of the oldest stories about the goddess who they are fighting over the Middle East. You know, if we go in the Quran, let us go back a little bit in the Quran so we can connect the dots together. Forget about Ibn Kathir now. Go to sleep, Ibn Kathir. If we go back in the Quran, we will find that the God of Islam, he agree that Baal is God. Baal. <clears throat> How that can be? The Muslim, they will say to you, liar, liar. It doesn't say that. It is read together. This is Quran, chapter 37, verse number 125. Read carefully with me, and this is your translation. Some translation, they take the letter S to hide the problem. Do you invoke Baal and abandon all the best of the creators? What does that mean? That means there's many creators, correct? You see, if I say I am the best student, that means there's many students. I'm not the only one. Otherwise, I'm lying. Is that correct, guys? 
If I say I am the best of the creators, that means I am not the only creator. As simple as that. If I say I am the best of the workers, it will be stupid and a fraud. If I am saying that and there is only one worker, it's me. Because you cannot be the best unless there is many beside you. So look what this verse confirms. That Baal is God, Allah is God, but he is better than Baal because he is the best of the creators. Now who is Baal? Anybody can tell me who is Baal? Who is Baal? Somebody help me. I'm not educated. Who is Baal? Anyone knows? What, what is the job of Baal? Who is Baal? One of the things the Middle Eastern for a long time worship or the gods is Baal. Baal is the god who gives fertility. Now, that's the, does the Quran believe that the one who made women carry a child is Baal? Absolutely. If we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran saying the following. Now, for you, because you didn't speak Arabic, you might be confused. But let us see. Who is the one who sleep with the women and make her have a baby, according to Islam? Even if it is your wife. Do you see the word Ba'laha? Do you see it? وَإِنْ إِمْرُعَ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِهَا Ba'al. Who is Baal? This is her husband. You see, in the translation, they make it husband, but in Arabic, it says Baal. Because Baal is the one who really sleep with your wife and make her have a baby. So how this word in to be the husband? Because the man, he married a woman, yes, he sleep with her, yes, but it is Baal who make the woman carry a child. And the Muslim, they lie by translating, saying, has, yes, it's mean husband. This is true. But in the same time, what is the word Baal? Baal, Baaliha. The Baal, it's Baal. If a woman, she afraid of her Baal. Muhammad and God is copying what the people believe for centuries before Islam, that Baal is the one who made the women carry a child so now he is calling the husband Baal and not only this is like in one time in the Quran it's mentioned many times as an example chapter 2 verse number 2 to 8 do you see it as an example chapter 11 verse number 72 this is my Baal As an example, chapter 24, verse number 31. How this is can be exist in the Quran? I will give you a fair explanation. Uh, people, they use the language. And this is what they say because they are coming from worshipping Baal. But you see, the problem will not stop here if we say this explanation because this can be accepted explanation. Uh, this is the language people, they carry on from previous generations and because they have used to have a belief in such a thing. But look, here we have a problem because Allah in chapter 37 verse 125, he said that Baal and Allah both are creators and Allah is better. You know, if Baal is not exist, how you can compare yourself to, to Baal anyway? How you say you are the best of the creators and you are speaking about Baal? You know what I mean? If he's fake, if, if Baal is not exist. Do we have any Muhammadan? 
We have 1,000 people watching, not even one Mohammedan call us. And here, by the way, we are mentioning the word the creator. This is a phrase Muhammad he stole from somebody who was the inscribed for him. We spoke before about a guy, his name Abdullah ibn Starah, who he left Islam because Muhammad he copied a sentence from him. The man was writing Quran for Muhammad. Muhammad reciting Quran and the guy writing down what he is saying. He's in his scribe. So when Muhammad he recited this, he said this. And when he arrived here, ثم أنشأناه خلقا آخر فتبارك الله here آخر Muhammad stop here. The guy continued. He liked what he said, so he said تبارك الله أحسن الخالقين. Who is the one who said that? The inscribe. Imagine you have secretary, and you are saying something to her to write down, and then you stop here. You stop with this. This is the last word. You stop with it. And you are done. And then the secretary, after you are done, she like what you said. So she say, Blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. Muhammad, he heard what the secretary said. He said, put it there. He said, put what? He said, put what you just said said but this is what I said because remember he's writing inspiration of Allah and the guy he is the one who said that but he said but this is this is me who said that he said and it came to me the same as it came to you and right away the man he knew that this man is a fraud so he said to himself and this is exist in their books all those stories by the way they are not from our pocket not from the books of the Jews not from the books of the Hindus this is from their scholars so the man he said to himself, well, if Muhammad is a prophet, I'm prophet too, because it was inspired to me the same as it's inspired to him, actually inspired to me before him. And this is how Muhammad, he ended with the stupidity by saying Allah is the best of the creators. Do we have any Muslim? So our Skype is open for nothing. Dr. Zach and Nayak now is busy. I need to warn you about the Christmas. It's a very big thing to say Merry Christmas to the Christian. It is more than a murder. Zachary Naik, you say to us Merry Christmas, you don't say Merry Christmas, we have a Christmas and you have none. And you are a fool. We are happy and you are crying. You see, they are jealous because we have happiness. Christ, he brings happiness to our life. They have nothing. Even when they have holiday, they spend it just eating. Like, blah, 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 blah. You know, you go inside the house, you will find the smell like crazy. They sleep all day in the day of Ramadan, and then they sleep. They, they wake up all night watching Billy Dancing and eating food. At the end of the month, their credit card is broken. They bankrupt, and they became so fat. And the price of food goes so crazy, so the poor die. This is what Ramadan does. Don't say Merry Christmas as if I'm waiting for you to say it, my friend. Like, you know what? We Christian, we will not be happy unless you say to us Merry Christmas. They have tons of videos about like, don't, don't let your children go and see Santa Claus, Papa Noel. And then in Egypt, they make a program and during the Christmas time, so your children, they can call a guy, his name is Papa Muhammad. Papa what? Papa who? Papa Muhammad? Okay, well, just don't take Aisha there. If your child is six years old, don't take it. Don't take your child next to this Papa Muhammad. You know what I'm talking about. Now, who's the Muslim want to answer us about all of this? We are here for how long? 
an hour and 10 minutes not a single call or what happened we are going to refute the christian prince christian prince is lying to you and about to translate him hmm. mayday mayday any muhammadan Hmm? Hello? He is the best of the creators? I mean, what a fraud. Imagine somebody, he come to you to your house, all right? And he say to you, <clears throat> oh, I have a company, a plumbing company. And by the way, I am the best of the employee in the company. And later we find that he is the only employee. Isn't it? This is a fraud. Isn't it? How you say you are the best? And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us that Allah is the only one God, but yet he is, there's many creators. And yet Allah, according to the Quran, he gave ability to Jesus to be creator too. So now we have two creators. And yet the Muslim believe that the Quran is not created by Allah. So it's created by who? Self-independent, self-creation. And yet we find Allah in the Quran saying that if you want to take a partner, a wife, or boom, boom, he will take it from ourselves. Is that right? Chapter 21, verse number 17. And the Muslims always, they try to, to change this uh, translation to make it like, to cover it. But it doesn't work. You see, you forgot we speak Arabic. Had we wished... To make a diversion, what do they make diversion? To take, to take a partner. And actually not a partner. The word lahu, the word lahu in Arabic, have many meaning. Today we use it for fun, like when you say fun. But the Arab at that time, when they say the word lahu, they mean women, for they are fun. So if we want to take a woman, we will take it from our self. Muslims, if Allah is one, how Allah will take a partner in the bed from ourself? Any Muhammadan, he have an answer for this? How Allah is one? There's nothing from. There's no like. He don't have a family. He don't have a son. He don't have a wife. There's nobody but him. Okay, so how he will take a partner from ourself? Allah will have boom boom with himself. He says, we will take it from ourselves. And you cannot tell me here the word we is about being his majesty, ourself. Ourself here is speaking about taking a partner. Hmm? You know what? Look like I am like Allah. And then now I don't have a partner. So it looks like, ah, this is what I'm thinking. I will take it from myself, ourself. Hmm. I notice that when I walk, there's me and my shadow. What is this? How Allah is one, and Allah will take a partner if he can do it, if he want to do it. But we don't mean to do it. Who care you mean or not, but you just confirm that if you want to take a partner, you will take it from ourselves. Ourselves, who you see, when we say ourselves and talking about a partner, that's mean we are many, correct? You see, I can say myself. Let us say Allah speak about Himself as majestic, as the Muslim they say. 
ourself. Okay, my problem. But he's talking about taking a partner, and she is a woman. So it cannot be him. It cannot be him. So ourself, it cannot be Allah, for this is about taking a partner, and she is a female. And by the way, we can show you the interpretation. In case you want to say like, okay, this is not true. It doesn't say that. Hmm? We can go right now and show you the interpretation. And we will see <coughs> what, what this is mean. <coughs> Come on, Muslims, call me before my throat go dry. So if we go to the interpretation, chapter 21, Verse number 17. Let us see what it says. And you see, this is your interpretation. So don't tell me, you know, you know, Christian Prince is lying. Here we go. It's in English too. This is the official government website of the King of Jordan. And you know, he's a fraud. Like he's a fraud. And by the way, he claimed to be from the children of Muhammad. This is explained why he's a fraud. Had we desired to find some diversion, that which provide the version in the way of a partner or a child. Do you see it? A partner or a child. We would have found it with ourselves from among the beautiful Aiduris. From where? Allah will take partners from where? From the Huris. Yes, brother. Oh, not not this one. This is the wrong Hori. Sorry. Hey, uh, let me find you the Hori Allah is talking about. Allah will take a partner from the Huris. I thought those Huris are made for men and they are human. How Allah is not a human, but yet his partner is a human. And he called them ourself. Mayday, mayday. Hmm? Any Muslim? Hello. And not only that, or from the angels, Allah will have sex with Jibreel. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really like, uh, really uh, wondering how this will happen. I would like to see that happening. How this, how, how Allah can do that with Jibreel and Mikael. For sure, those names are not, they don't belong to the Bible. Those are stolen. They, they have something. This is a different religion. Take note. We have nothing to do with it. He stole the names, but those are not what, what we believe in. Any Muhammadan? This is the most confused cult. The author of the cult is confused. The followers are more confused. And the result is confusion. To the point when Muhammad, they asked him a question about the Quran. What Muhammad, he said, ask me no questions. Chapter 5, verse 101. I know nothing. I have no idea. And then he made a verse for them saying, additional to ask me nothing, that there is verses in the Quran nobody knows what they mean save Allah so what's your job uh, my job is to bring the verses really and look at this this book brother is full of a lot of verses nobody know what they mean and actually the one who will use them is the one who have sick in his heart but is this the book of the devil or the book of God? So I thought the book of the Quran is a guidance for mankind, not a confusion. So Muhammad, in order to, uh, to avoid answering, where do you get this book from? Who is this guy? You see, imagine you are making a lecture. 
And then you said a name, whatever, you know, and they said to you, who is this guy? Uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Allah told me that there is some verses in the Quran, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. So why you are sending to them to us? What you will do with them? And no, brother, those are verses sent for those who they have a problem with their heart, so they can follow them. But these are Muslims. So Allah sending a book to deceive the Muslims. So by following the Quran, you'll be undeceived. Do you see it? The Quran saying. That Allah He sent verses in the Quran. If you listen to them, if you believe in them, you are going to be misleaded. Read it. This is not my translation. Any Muhammadan? May they, may they. Are we having are we having a good time, guys? Why we have only nine hundred fifty three people here? Where's the rest? Okay, guys, uh, I saw a video uh, saying that Christians they convert people out of Islam because we give them food. Record me, Muslims. Hey, guys, if you are a Muslim and you convert to Christianity, uh, we are going to give you five hamburgers. Once, once a Muslim chat room. I used to go into Muslim chat rooms and right away you should see what what happened when I enter a chat room. Anyway, Christian Prince, the guy is in the mic like he starts like so nervous. Christian Prince, we got you, we got you in tape. We know how to convert Muslims out of Islam to Christianity. I said, okay, how? He said, okay, listen, listen. So he played my voice saying, "Give me one Muslim, I will give you five hamburgers." I was joking, you idiot. I mean, are you serious? We are in the internet. So now they are spreading videos saying that Christian prince he convert Muslims by giving them five hamburgers. So he gave me the microphone and I said to him, are you saying that you Muslims are willing to exchange your God for the sake of five hamburgers? How cheap? And you should see what happened. <laughs> I mean, look how silly they are. They want to explain why Muslims are leaving after talking to this guy. Obviously, he is giving them hamburger, and here we go, we have his voice. He said, can you deny it? I said, no, I cannot deny it. Yes, I said that. Are you saying that your Muslims leave Allah and his religion for the sake of five hamburgers? <laughs> There's a guy, his name is Muslim Programmer. This guy, he was like very active Muslim. So one day he came and he became a Christian, all right? So he said, Christian Prince, you have to give me uh, my, uh, the new shoes. No, no, sorry. Uh, you need to, uh, uh, you, you should give me the 300 dollars. I said, what dollars? What are you talking about? He said, well, in the chat rooms, they are saying you pay me 300 dollars to leave Islam. <laughs> if everyone, he leave Islam because I give him 300 dollars, I will be homeless from long time ago. Oh boy. Any Mohammedan? So Allah, he sent the book, and this book have misleading, misleading chapters and verses to fool you. How we can trust this book? This book saying that to us, the book itself saying that to us. You guys made me hungry now. I, I know I did not. I did not eat since yesterday. So, any Muslim want to call? My Skype is open. Let me see. Is it open really? Am I connected to the internet? Yes, I am connected to the internet. So, why there's nobody calling? What's happening? Okay, if you call me, we'll give you five hamburgers. <laughs> Halal hamburger. Halal. In Saudi Arabia, they have a beer. It's, uh, uh, it's a beer, but it's uh, alcohol-free. It's halal. <laughs> it tastes like a urine. Oh, boy. 
Tono Mohammedan. Okay, well, what we can do? Scooby Scooby Doo. You know, but we have to admit, Islam is a very, I mean, very mo moderate religion. As an example, long, long before boyfriend and girlfriend, the Prophet of Allah, he said, if any guy, any, uh, any girl, they like to do boom, boom for two days, two days, three days, it's halal, do it. Hmm? I mean, this is very open. Uh, they, today they use the word open-minded, right? Which I find it very funny and stupid. But this is, uh, for me, this is what I see open-minded. It's you going around and sleeping with everybody. Allah Apostle said, if a man and a woman agree, and put between two brackets, temporary marriage, where is the word temporary marriage? Where is the word marriage, man? Where do you get the word marriage in the hadith? Here we go. It's in Arabic in front of me. I don't see the word marriage. It says, Fa'ishara tu. Aishara, it means sleeping together. Where is the word marriage? Their sexual relationship should last for three nights. Three nights? Okay, announcement. My name is Muhammad Ali, and I want to do three nights stand relationship according to Allah. Halal. I mean, how does... You see, they say to us, we are conservative, and the women, she cover herself. But this is the most lousy cult ever. Breastfeeding for adult. Having sex around. Even the scars of Islam until now, they, they have no agreement if it's okay. There's no punishment if you sleep with your mother. There's no punishment if you sleep with your daughter. If there's no punishment if you sleep with your sisters. And we show you all those references before. Even the Quran teach and the interpretation says that a man, if he have a daughter out of marriage, he can sleep with her, but not from, daughter, from marriage, supposedly. What is this? Three day, three days, three night. I mean, girlfriend and boyfriend, they are more honorable than you, Muhammad, because at least they don't, there's no guy he go to a woman and says to her, I want to date you for three days. She will not accept unless she is. <coughs> Actually, yesterday I saw a fatwa. Let me see it if I can see, uh, if I can find it. A big sheikh in Egypt, he made a fatwa. Fatwa, it's like a holy, according to Islam, religious uh, uh, law. Uh, he said, it is halal for a Muslim man to marry a woman and his, in his intention to divorce her after whatever time. Which means a man, a Muslim man, he can marry you. And he tell you, I will marry you for like, you are my wife. That's it. He, he never mentioned he want to divorce you after two weeks. So he said, if he want to like somebody, he's a student going to different country. Uh, you know, it's okay to marry a woman without telling her that his intention is to divorce her when he want to leave. Let me see. Hold on. I'm trying to find the, the fatwa. I mean, do you believe it? How the cult is crazy. <clears throat> where is where is the thing? Where is the thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe here. I'm trying to see it to, to find it, but I'm sure that especially if those who they are from Egypt, they can find it easy. Um, I'm trying to find. Here we go. 
حكم الزواج بنية الطلاق Actually, uh, this is not something new. I mean, the Muslim scholars, they agree upon that. That a Muslim man, he can marry you and he hide from you that he want to divorce you after a week. Like he is going, let us say, the Muslim he is going to uh, uh, Indonesia. He found a woman and, uh, you know, he, he liked to sleep with her. But he have to do it in the legal way. Right? So he will not tell you, I'm going to marry you for a week. He will say, I want to marry you. Okay, here we go. I found I found the page. Let me put it for you in the screen. This is a Muslim website, I have nothing to do with it. And here Al Magamisi, the Sheikh Al Magamisi. يكشف حكم الزواج بنية الطلاق للمسافر. He says he says what is the rules regarding a marriage for someone he 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 meant to divorce, which means he marry you, but he went to divorce you for he is traveling. I will click at Google Translation in front of your eyes. But let me read first where he what says that so we can find it easier. All right. <clears throat> so he says. That marrying, marrying with the intention to divorce, that a man he come and he marry a woman, as it is known, like the normal marriage we know as a Muslims, by all uh, the conditions of Islam, are rules. And then the woman she agree, but in his heart he hide, the, the husband he hide, that he is going to divorce her. He is, he is marrying her, just he, he don't want to, he don't want to live with her, he don't want to stay with her, he don't want to have kids from her. But he want to divorce her, sorry, he want to marry her, so he want to divorce her later when he leave. Now we click at Google Translation. The marriage with the intention of divorce. <laughs> it's halal. It is halal. A Muslim man, he will marry you and he lie to you he say to you, I want to marry you. I want to have a children from you. I want to settle with you. But in fact, he is just a doing a business a trip and he want to have sex for some time. It is halal. And the fatwa is in the front of you. It's a principle. Have you ever heard of a stupid cult disgusting more than this? So they say to us, oh, we Muslim Sunni, we don't do muta. You do muta. You just change the name. You go at a woman and you you lie to her. This is more, more ugly, actually, because the woman in the muta, she knew that you don't want to stay with her. You are going to pay her money for some time. You want to have fun and you want to go. So she understand that already. You are not cheating here. But here, this is a cheating. You go to a woman. You say to her, I want to marry you. I love you. Then when she go to the bedroom, she sleep with you. You have some fun you are there for vacation then you take your back you jump in the airplane and you send her text message you are divorced and this is according to islam is halal am i lying muhammadan am i lying let me let me give you the the link for the and by the way, this is all over the internet. And this is not the only guy who's saying that. I can show you Ibn Baz, big, big scholars. All of them, they agree that this is halal. This is very true. This is, uh, this is right. There's, not, there's nothing wrong because the man is allowed to lie to his wife. Exactly, and Muslim they do this to get citizenship, but here not only for citizenship, even even just for fun. You see, they marry you. They don't want to marry you. They believe you are maybe a disgusting person to just to get citizenship. After you, after they marry you, they 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 throw you out. They don't know you no more. This is why I say you have to warn ladies who you know that marrying a Muslim 
is nothing but a fraud will end, will end as a fraud because this cult you see when you say a Muslim you believe in this so how you will know that even this guy he have intention to marry you marrying in the intention of divorce have you ever heard of such a thing before marrying in the intention of divorce halal <laughs> what a sheep what a sheesh kebab cult and they say to you islam is a is religion preserve women and you don't allow sex around you are right islam all of it is about sex around in heaven in earth everywhere you go it's about sex this is the truth my friend take it or leave it not a single muslim did call us in skype our skype is open let us i will log off as long as nobody is calling anyway so my friends as you see islam is just a stupid cult please download our videos and share them around because this is will not be a good education if we keep it to ourselves you see maybe you think that okay you are a person who is protected from being fooled by a muhammadan what about your son your daughter your wife your family they go around and they see people and they might meet muhammadans and they lie to them so it's your duty to protect your family if you don't want to go and uh, do be a missionary to look to to, to to share the truth at least share what you learn from your family so you can protect your kids my friend you don't want to have a son or a daughter coming back saying I want to practice this this is a shameful cult disgusting cult and there's no way people with honor will accept this no way a woman who have honor will accept this and no way a man who have honor will accept this because the purpose of marriage is not sleeping in the bed and having fun it's part of it that you have in you enjoy each other yes but the purpose of marriage to have a family that there's a man and the women they love each other and they are living together to have a family that's what marriage is so what is this they want to make themselves they are not we are not after sex this is what the religion is about everything is about after sex what about this woman so look look at look at this this cult how ugly he is saying it's okay to lie to a woman to cheat on her to lie to her to say to her i want to marry you i love you i want to stay with you and then after a few days the man he call you or maybe he will not even call you he send you a text message says you are divorced you say you're a liar he says it's halal for me to lie it's accepted and yet they call this marriage If this is marriage what is it what 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 is what is it this is a crime actually this is a fraud this is a fraud this is a religion allowing the man to victimize the women use them and abuse them and then dump them in the street so the guy will go to you he says I love you I want to marry you and then after a few days he wanna he, he take up you are like his laptop computer you know why he want to carry a computer with him Actually, if you have my book, Six and Allah, you will see how they have, they have a marriage, it's called travel marriage. Travel marriage. A guy is going from a city to a city or country to a country. He cannot carry his wives with him. He marry a wife there. He will stay there for a month or two or a one week. He is allowed legally to marry a woman for a week and then divorce her or even for one day. And the purpose, my brother, that we don't want to have adultery. Suppose this is not adultery. This is marriage, brother. Do you see the deception? Do you see the deception? This is the deception itself.
how ugly any cult in the world can be more than this. I cannot find more ugliness more than this. <clears throat> any Muhammadan? A Muslim is quoting it for us from the Old Testament. Why, why you don't call me so we will make you read it and you will, we, you will laugh at you? You're a coward. Do you like to call us? The one who is posting from uh, the Old Testament? And we will make you read it and everybody will laugh at you? What do you say? Do you have the courage? No, you don't have a courage. You, you idiot. This is about a woman. She is a prisoner of war. You coward. And actually, if you compare what it says there in verse number 14, and we compare what the Quran says about treating those women, we will see the difference. The woman who is a prisoner of war, she have to shave her head. Why? So the man, he will not have a desire to her. She will look like a man. And if you marry her, if you want to marry her, it says, if you want to marry her, read verse number 11, you coward. That's why you cut the verses. To marry her, not to rape her. And then you give her one month. You don't touch her. Somebody guys post for us the verses. I mean, they are coward. They are, they don't dare even to, not even one of them, he have the courage to be honest. Cowards. A prisoner of war. If we compare this to Muhammad, Muhammad, he kidnapped Safiya. He raped her after two hours from killing her family. Actually, her family in the ground. He made her walk in the top of them. And then he made a tent and he raped her. And here you will see if you, if you choose one of those women to marry her. You bring her home. You don't touch her. For one month she's your wife but yet you don't touch her and you have no right to sell her out and if you are not happy with her you let her go she's free to go so what you are quoting for me as bad proving to us that there is no way we compare the old testament to your faith in muhammad Who's next? <laughs> Who's next? Actually, here you see how the Bible treating those people who they are prisoner of war. You marry her, you don't touch her for a month at least, you don't get close to her. Because this woman, she lost her family. She became a prisoner. She's sad. Muhammad, he raped the women. He didn't even leave the town. And what we are showing you here, we are talking about a woman. She is a Muslim. And you marry her. And the intention is to lie to her. She is not even a captive of war. Yeah, we will talk about this maybe in different time. So anyway, guys, I think we have a good time today. Did we enjoy it? Uh, I, I wish I can speak longer, but I want to give a chance for those who download the videos because some they have a really slow internet, you know. Uh, 
uh, especially from Indonesia. You know, I'm really happy about how many millions of people they are watching my videos in Indonesia. Newspaper talking about my videos, etc. I mean, we are we are causing a revolution in this country. And none of these ustaz, they call themselves ustad or supposedly teachers, they dare to call me. Not from those who speak Arabic, not those from who speak English, not those from who speak in Indonesia, not, not Zakir Naik, not Shabir Ali, none of them. They are terrified. I mean, how you can be not terrified with this? Look at this garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. Who in the world can def defend garbage? It's like calling me and try to convince me that garbage smells like perfume. I don't remind me of the perfume now. According to the hadith, that when the prophet he used to do poo poo, the earth opened its mouth and it swallowed his poop. And his sperm smelled like perfume. No, sorry, not sperm, piss. Right? So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will try to go tomorrow or maybe after a few hours from now, if I rest, to go and see. We can give some time for those who they are from Indonesia and East Asia. All right. We love those people in Asia and we need to, to, you know, to save them from this cult. They are good people. They are beautiful people, but they are being deceived. They don't speak Arabic. They have no idea what this cult is about. So uh, uh, this is why it's very important that we share what we learn not only just we learn and we laugh it is I, I know like some some they think this is a comedy okay christian prince is uh, make zach and i'm not making zach and to make you laugh i'm doing what i'm doing to show you how stupid the skull this is the purpose so you have to share the purpose with us if you are a decent person otherwise you are here just wasting your time We are not here for comedy. This is very dangerous business, by the way. Saying the truth is a dangerous business. But doesn't matter what dangerous, how dangerous it is. I enjoy it. I love it. Especially when I see people leaving this cult. And then their family leave. And then the family and the family and the family. And then the snowball grow. And then they go and make a video saying 100,000 Muslims leaving Islam here. The fact is not 100,000, you coward. Al Jazeera TV said, this is many years ago, 6 million Muslims leave Islam. When a Muslim, he got somebody Western, especially if he's a blonde. You know, they, 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 they like, to, like uh, to use the blonde people for propaganda. They put him in TV everywhere, make videos while you convert to Islam. Have you seen how many videos for those who leave Islam? They don't dare because they will be killed. My friend, Islam collapsed. Islam, Islam is, is, is a big balloon. All what you need is a needle. And I'm giving you the needle. With this, I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And until I see you soon again, Remember one thing, Christmas is coming, Christmas is coming, but every day is a Christmas for us as a Christians. Every day is a day of a Christ. For him and by him, everything was created. Remember that. But the most important is, before the Christmas come, if you are angry from somebody, forgive him. If you have a family member, you're upset from him, talk to him. Forgive, my friend. If you have a mother, you are not taking care of her, call her. Check her out. She's your mom. If you have a father, if you have a grandfather, if you have a neighbor, if you have somebody you know, he's sad, he needs your help. If you know somebody is poor. You see the Lord? He remember those who remember those. Which mean the Messiah, he said, I was a stranger and you took me in. I was a prisoner, you visited me. I was hungry and you feeded me. 
which means each time you do it to those people you are doing it to the Messiah in every one of those people you help the Messiah is there for you so don't make the Christmas a tree and don't spend your money in stupid things expensive lights if you have extra money give it to somebody poor give it to a child he cannot go to school to somebody he cannot go to hospital Christmas is not a tree my friend Christ is way more than this Christ he wants us to be happy but the best happiness is when you make people who they are poor happy somebody he need help make him happy share happiness share what God gave you be holy like your father So may the Lord bless you all. And I hope in this Christmas we will remember people who they need us. Start from your family. Be patient. Be beautiful. Be kind to your wife, to your children, to your neighbors. Help others. Be something in this society. Don't be a number. There's millions of people who pass before us, and there's millions will go after us, and every day there's hundreds of thousands die. Be someone people will remember for being good, not being filthy. There's two they will remember you, the Lord and the people. So either you choose to make them remember you for being a wonderful person, beautiful person, or to remember you because you are a criminal, idiot, filthy, you hurted them. This is why the Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And the, with the word of our Lord, the best words to end with, remember, from their fruits, you shall know them. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.